you only live once, Exile. Make your choice. A simple ultimatum. Leave with your life and a meager reward, or risk it all for a chance at ungodly riches. Hey all, and welcome back to Fuzzy Dirt's of Gaming, and a new video on the channel going over an ultimatum test that I'm doing, along with a detailed explanation of what the mechanic is for newer players. So I basically finally got bored of my scour and go quick map, so I've decided I want to try a strategy that packs a lot into a map, but might take four to five minutes to clear. The idea is to try and get maybe a divining loop per map. Part of this strategy, which I will bring out later on if it's profitable, is going to be ultimatum. And even though the loot is quite spiky, and then honestly it's not one of the top money earners, a lot of stuff you get from them is now worth big currency. So we'll go over the setup for the ultimatum part in the Atlas tree in a moment. I just wanted to talk about the mechanic overall. So before I do go into that, the main reason, apart from profitability, that I'd maybe not recommend everyone run ultimatum, is it is very rippy and quite difficult, and it does take some time. Now, considering you could just brain dead scour and go some maps for probably the same, if not more profit, it's not going to suit everyone. And you kind of really have to enjoy the mechanic uh, to actually make the most of it. So let's talk about what ultimatum is as a mechanic for players who maybe weren't around the last time that it existed. It's essentially a survival kill mini game based in a very limited circle in a map with stacking downside modifiers the further you go through the mechanic. Now with the way I run the mechanic, you are free to choose which of these modifiers you want out of three to try and ensure that you don't end up with a mod too rippy or build disabling. The way it works is you do 10 rounds. Each round you will see a reward on offer and you select to continue. If you complete the round, you get that reward put into a temporary stash, which you can view in between rounds to check your progress. Now the best feature by far that Ultimatum has is the fact that you can complete a round, the game pauses and you're free to then look at the next modifier you're going to pick. You can maybe check what you've got in your stash so far, and it will not continue until you click the button to say you're ready and you've selected your next modifier. Now, there are some really good keystones and nodes on the Atlas tree that give you options to buff the loot quite a lot, which I'll go through, as I say, when we get to the skill tree. So in terms of ultimatum, there are four different types, and you can see which type it is before you start the encounter. There are survive, stand in stone circles, protect the altar, and kill enemies. Let's go through those four. Stand in stone circles is by far the worst encounter. It essentially requires you to stand in stone circles that appear as a red circle on your minimap, and you have to stand in them for a period of time to capture them. The longer the rounds go on, the more stone circles you have to stand in. Survive, as expected, is a time-based survival mechanic. All you have to do is outlive the timer that's running along the bottom. When the timer hits the end, the round finishes and you get your loot. This encounter can be really annoying because the later rounds are very, very long. And depending what modifiers you've selected, it can actually be quite difficult to stand in circles for a long period of time. In the tests I've done, I actually found just skipping stone circles and survive is more profitable. Even if I'm wasting things like scarabs and currency in the map, they just take too long. And because the loot is quite spiky in ultimatum, I actually think you would make more profit just totally skipping these. There are ways to make sure you get less of those than the other mechanics, which again will go through on the skill tree. So the next one is kill enemies, and that's self-explanatory. There's a bar on a screen that fills up as you kill monsters, and the rarer the monster, the more of the bar gets filled. When the bar fills up, the round is complete. This one, if you've got a character with decent TPS, is very, very quick. Then lastly, there's protect the altar, which is essentially the same as kill enemies, except there's an altar in the middle of the arena with a life bar that you need to protect. If the altar loses all its health, you lose the encounter. If you have a decent build, you don't really have to worry about the altar. Just treat this as another kill enemies mechanic. Now, ultimatum is an all or nothing mechanic. You either win and get the loot or you lose and get nothing. There's no way to bank the loot you've earned and carry on. You can leave after any round. So if you maybe found four divines and you're a bit worried about carrying on, you can just collect at the end of the round and you'll get all of your rewards. You don't have to worry about losing it, but you then can't continue. All of the events, as mentioned, take place within a small circle that's similar to Ritual, except in Ultimatum, you can leave this area. You will get a timer with a warning saying, out of area, go back. And if you don't go back by the time the timer expires, you just lose the encounter. 
It is something that's handy to do though. If for example, the area suddenly becomes deadly for a couple of seconds, you can actually just walk outside of the arena for a few seconds and go back when things have calmed down. So I mentioned there's modifiers that you will take each round that basically make the encounter harder. I'm not going to go through each one individually as the video is going to be too long, but I'll put a link to PoE DB where you can look at every single modifier available and what it does. The only main thing to mention is that most modifiers have a ranking from one to four. The higher in number, the more dangerous the modifiers. Now you can read the description of all the modifiers before you take them. And as mentioned, the game is paused at this point, so you can take your time to select the modifiers. Some will be super dangerous to some builds and trivial for others. One, for example, is you take 500% of your mana spent on skills as lightning damage. So for some spell builds that might do thousands of mana, that could be, yeah, absolutely insanely damaging. But for my build that uses about 10 mana a second, it's trivial to non-existent damage. All of this is going to be affected by like your resistances and things like that, so it's not flat damage taken. What I try to do with the modifiers is not go up to rank 4 unless it's one of the easier ones, because what it often does is add a secondary effect to the modifier and a difficulty to the modifier. The modifier Choking Miasma, for example, is a really good example. In the lower levels, it's a pretty easy mod. There is basically a very slow, fairly low damaging Chaos Cloud that follows you around and deals Chaos damage over time. Once you get to rank 4 though, the Cloud gets much quicker, but not only does it gauge speed, if it hits you, it hinders and slows you down, and they can cause problems, especially if you then end up in a temporal bubble from an enemy, you'll find that you're just not moving at all and you're very likely to die. Unless you take a keystone that extends the events to 13 rounds, each ultimatum counter has 10 rounds. Once you hit round 10, there's a 2% chance that that final round turns into a trial master boss fight. This can be big money if you get lucky, but equally it can be worthless. I've not found them yet this league, so I'm still waiting to do that encounter. One thing to note is that you won't know if the trial master is going to be round 10. Round 10 will have your normal rewards. So let's say you're about to pick round 10, you see that it's four orbs of regret and you think that's not worth it for a round 10 reward, I'll just leave. It could be that you click on that reward and then it changes into the trial master. So it will never actually say you're going to get that fight. It is just going to randomly throw you in every now and again. Now you do need a very good offensive and defensive character to do ultimatum well. It's much better if you've got a build that can circumvent a lot of modifiers because it means you don't have to worry too much about the modifiers and it means you can be quicker because you don't have to um and ah about what modifier to select. In terms of loot, according to GGG in the pre-league details, quantity affects the number of catalysts to drop from these encounters, but I've actually not noticed much of a difference when Chislin and Alkin. So the last thing to go through before we get to the passive tree is why I've picked Ultimatum when I did it at the beginning of the league and said it was a total bust. There are three reasons. One, my character is now much stronger, so I can do the Ultimatums much quicker. Two, there are some things which we'll go through at the end of the video that were worth a couple of C at league start that are now 170C and they're fairly common. And then thirdly, catalysts are absolutely insane money. For the Prismatic and Fertile, if you want to buy them in bulk, it's four or five catalysts for one divine. You can walk out of one encounter with six or seven of them, which can make you earn some big currency. So we'll just go over the Atlas tree. Ignore the entire tree. This is me testing out some stuff. I'm just going to go over the ultimatum stuff to give you an idea of what nodes I'm taking, because there are some that I take and there are some that I do not. So I don't take any chance because I'm forcing it in with a Scarab. If you use a Gilded Scarab, it also counts rewards one round higher. So if you had a round 10 reward, it'll count it as round 11. If you get to round 9, it'll count it as round 10. haven't noticed much of a difference yet, but apparently the further in the rounds you get, the more likely you are to get more expensive drops. So the nodes we take are increased number of monsters, which sounds like it doesn't do anything, but it does because it just means you get through the kill events quicker. Increased experience I'm just taking because I have to. I'm taking Prove Yourself Worthy, which essentially the modifiers in your map start a tier higher, so it'll start at tier 2. But you have 25% chance for your rewards to be duplicated, and on two occasions I have had Divines duplicated. So this is well worth taking if your build can handle it. Over here we've got Stand Your Ground. So what this does is reduce the radius of the circle each round. It does end up pretty small. But what it does, similar to the Scarab, is it grants your rewards as if you've completed an additional round. So essentially with the Scarab and this node, when we complete round 10, it's counting it as a round 12. So we'll go through this wheel here. This is very, very important. 
So the first entry one is just chance to get ultimatum. This doesn't do anything because I'm forcing it on with the scarab. But what these other nodes do is they make specific types of encounters easier. So if we look at these nodes I've taken here, it is in the ones where you have to kill waves of enemies, you have to kill 10% less enemies to progress. And then the major node is another 20% reduced number of enemies. So overall, taking these two nodes, it gives you a 30% reduced number of enemies that you need to kill. Along with that, more importantly, it gives you a 100% increased chance to get defeat waves of enemies. They lead to this keystone here, which I am taking because I've got quite a lot of evasion in my build. What it says is ultimatum monsters in your map apply ruin with their special abilities. Essentially, ruin is just a debuff and you'll see when you've got it in the corner of the screen. There'll be a number that turns up. If you get to seven, you automatically fail. The reason I take this is it also makes modifiers and monsters do 50% less damage, which is insane. If you don't take this, I think even a decent character can get killed with the wrong modifiers or wrong rare monsters. I would recommend always take this. If it turns out that you can't get through it because you get too much ruin, you can try leaving it or it might be that you need to tweak your build or it might be that ultimatum just isn't suited to the build that you've got. I also take... Altars have 25% increased life, which doesn't really do anything because it never dies. And then again, just a 100% chance to get protect the altar. And just in case, another 50% life. I would not do stone circles ever. They're awful. And if it reduced the time to stand in them, I may take it, but it doesn't. It just increases the radius, which really doesn't help very much. The encounters still take forever and they're very annoying to do. What you might want to do is look at these ones here for survival, which basically reduces the duration by 30%. I didn't take these and I found these encounters infuriating. However, skipping them may be not be the right option. Taking these two nodes might make them more manageable. Maybe people who have done ultimatum um, can give me some feedback. Do you think these are worth taking or are these always a skip and you just don't do survive ultimatums? Now, because we're getting 100% increased chance for these two, I actually found that I only had nine, I think, out of 50 ultimatums there were either survival stone circles and I just skipped them. But that is nearly 20% of my encounters that I've just not done because they're not the type I prefer. And then lastly, we've got two wheels up here. This first one just gives you increased chance for the final round to be trial master. Like I said, in 40 maps, haven't found him. These ones here are super important for profit and the type of loot that you get. So the small nodes give you 10% increased chance for your rewards to be inscribed ultimatums. I'll explain why this is important when we go over what sort of loot you're going to get. And then the major nodes give you inscribed ultimatums have a 50% increased chance to reward div cards, but also your ultimatum rewards have a 50% increased chance. Then we have the same for unique items and the same for currency items. You want to take all of these three. Now you may say, well, it might give you bad div cards. It might give you bad uniques and it, it does in some occasion, but uniques are mostly double corrupted in this mechanic. The reason we're taking them is if you don't, you're going to find probably a quarter to half of your loot is really worthless, double corrupted rares that you're basically going to throw on the ground or in the trash. They're never going to be of any value unless you get super, super lucky. Taking these nodes just means you have less chance of getting those really, really bad rewards. And they're kind of the ultimatum node that I'm taking. And that's kind of it. In terms of the currency and kind of map strategy at the moment i'm just using that gilded ultimatum scarab they're not particularly expensive they're basically the cheapest gilded scarab i'm just putting one of them in each map i am going to test this with other mechanics because i want to try and just get really juiced maps so i can get lots of currency i've not finished testing yet so i'm not going to bring out kind of a guide but it's looking like it's going to be ultimatum blight and essences blight is insane money essences again very good money for very easy and quick content and then combine that with ultimatum. But these maps are going to take a while. Blight's going to be maybe one and a half minute encounters. Ultimatums are one and a half to two minutes. Then you've got your map and your essence. I'm not bothered about killing the boss in these maps other than to get my um, invitation at the end. So I'm hoping between four to five minutes per map for this sort of strategy. We're again going to be putting a Gilded Blight Scarab into Force Blight. If we actually highlight a Blight node. And then we're also going to get the compasses that make your oils drop a tier higher, but your towers cost twice as much to build. So if you don't need towers to carry your blights, then this is definitely a compass you should 100% pick up. If you do this sort of thing, they're 10 to 12 to C for four uses. And yeah, they'll turn any silver oils you get into a gold oil, any opalescent into a silver. 
and so on. It definitely, definitely is worth the currency. You don't know necessarily when it's working. You don't know if that gold oil that dropped should have been a gold or should have been a silver. But I think for the currency of being like three to four cows per map, there's no way it's not worth the currency. But I'm getting a bit ahead of myself. Let's just go back and we'll look at the loot from my ultimatum farms. So we'll just refresh just to make sure it's up to date, but I think it should be. It is. So this is the loot from essentially about 40 ultimatums because I skipped 10 of them and we're looking at 35 divines. Now there's a few things that stand out where you might be like, well, that is insanely lucky. The first one being a 2120 zealot tree, which according to Peewee Ninja is five divines and then six divines. I essentially got one divine reward and a two divine reward and they duplicated both times. So that means I got 11 divines from these rewards. However, our rewards are actually less than that. And I'm going to explain why and come back to that one item that I mentioned at League Start was worthless and now is very, very expensive for how common they are. And they are inscribed ultimatums. These are things that can drop just as a reward from ultimatum. And then you obviously have a 25% chance for them to double. Essentially, no one's running these for the actual rewards unless you get very lucky. For those that aren't aware, these are an ultimatum key that you put into a map. And basically, you have to sacrifice something. And if you complete that ultimatum, it doubles it for you. So this requires 20 Vile Orbs. If you complete it, you get your 20 back plus another 20. You may ask why these are expensive. Who's going to pay or even want to do something that looks difficult for only 20 Vile Orbs? And the answer lies in challenges. There are challenges this league where you have to complete inscribed ultimatums at area level 83. Obviously, nobody is running ultimatum. So these things are actually pretty pricey. If we go in here, we can see, if we go into trade, you can see all of those up for sale and ignoring those priced at 140, they'll instantly sell. To be honest, I've been selling them at 160 without too many issues. So if you do get these drop, that's seven tenths of a divine pretty much for everyone you get. If it duplicates, it's 1.4. That's why I mentioned on the skill tree, it is very important to take all of these minor nodes because we want we want these to drop. If they could drop every round, we'd be absolutely rich. I have had ultimatums where I've had two back to back. I've had ones where they've doubled. They are fairly common. You're not going to find them every ultimatum. But if we go in and have a look at the 40 I did and look how many I've got. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So I'm getting about one in every two and a bit ultimatums. I'm getting one of these inscribed ultimatums. So that's the reason I said, although the loot looks out of the ordinary because of the divines and the gem if we had all of these up so if we say we had 16 at let's say 160 then we divide that by the divine ratio we're looking at 12 divines and obviously the loot that i had if we go back to wealthy exile is 11 divines so actually i'm shorting myself by using this here but there'll be lots of things you maybe don't want to sell down here that don't sum up so i think in terms of loot that you're actually going to sell 35 divines from my 40 ultimatum seems about right. So you're looking at just less than a divine for a mechanic that takes about yeah two to three minutes. I need to do a lot more testing and a lot more numbers to find out really what the average sort of drop is, like how many divines are you likely to see in 50 maps. You do get these jewels fairly regularly. It's just whether they're a jewel that's worth any currency or not. And the last thing to point out before we close out the video is Catalyst. They are insane money. I had to catalyst up a ring that I purchased and I needed 20 of them and I had to pay four divines to get those 20. And as you can see from the prices here, prismatics are, yeah, four divines for around 20. Fertiles are actually a bit more than this. These are the ones I bought and it cost me five divines for 20. So this is probably more like six divines. Pretty much every catalyst is worth money compared to previous leagues where it might be, you know, certain catalysts are worth 0.2 chaos or something like that. Some are obviously worth less, but in general, catalysts are worth selling. So let's talk about does it matter what maps you run? And in all honesty, it doesn't to an extent, because even if you're in a map that only has narrow corridors, when you get an ultimatum, it will basically make a space for that ultimatum to fit in. The issue is it doesn't necessarily take into account um, like walls, bits of cliffs and things like that. So it might be because I did a few on Mesa and it spawned really close to the rocky area and half of the arena I couldn't even access. And then I accidentally took a node that filled the middle with a degen and I couldn't actually go anywhere safely. The next thing to mention is map modifiers affect ultimatum. So if I was you, I would never take increased AOE because it also applies to all of the ultimatum modifiers as well. So again, I didn't realize that. 
I took an ultimatum, modified it, puts in the middle around the area, it puts a damage over time, physical damage over time area. And it's normally about half the size of the arena, but with increased AoE, it was nearly the whole arena. Then because I take the keystone that lowers the AoE over time, by the time I got to round seven, there wasn't anywhere safe for me to stand. So I had to get my way through that round, finish the encounter, and I potentially missed out on round eight, nine, and 10 rewards. As I say, I don't know if chiseling and Alk in a map makes a difference. I honestly don't think it does, but it depends what else you're running in the map as to whether you do that. The other thing to consider is what mechanics do you combine it with? Because if you're doing something like Delirium, for example, do you want to stop and do that ultimatum and also have Delirium monsters on death effects and all that kind of thing spawning in your ultimatum encounter? Probably not. Same with Beyond. Do you want lots of random Beyond monsters and potentially a Beyond boss turning up when you're in the middle of an encounter with tons of debuffs on you? You also have the decision with Delirium is if you don't want to do it while you're in your fog, you have to get to the end of the map, collect your Delirium rewards, and then backtrack to do the ultimatum. So the way I've tended to do these is just put mechanics in that are profitable, but it doesn't matter if I do them or not. So at the time I had Delhi mirror and if I got a Delhi mirror I would just get to the end and backtrack because I've got a super quick character I put in essences and if they turned up on the way I took them if not no biggie then I did the ultimatum I wasn't killing the boss unless I had to for an invitation I was just straight back out and into another map and one of the plus points about ultimatum is it really doesn't matter what map you do as long as it's not one where you might get screwed by scenery you can do any map so it means you don't have to necessarily worry about map sustain so you can maybe go through your stash pull out those 30 colonnade maps that you never run and go and do your ultimatums in there. Let's say you don't need to kill the boss for this type of mechanic other than to get your invitation. And then the other things, if they turn up, they turn up like essences. If they don't, you don't worry about it. You do your ultimatum and you leave. Now, do I think this is a strategy that I would push to say everyone should do this is insane? I would say definitely not. I do think Blight and Ultimatum combined, if you've got a good build, should push 20 to 25 divines an hour if you're able to complete every encounter and you don't get on the wrong side of RNG, but I haven't tested it yet, so I do not know. But for the average player, I would say this is not a mechanic to do. Profit is spiky, difficulty is hard, and you do need knowledge to understand how to get through the encounters easily, which will obviously come with practice. But compared to things like Essence and Beast farming in white maps or going and doing Delhi mirrors or boss rushing in scoured T16 maps, or even doing things like Harvest or Expedition, they are levels easier, I think, than doing Ultimatum. And in, in the end of it, probably more rewarding. But I want to try loads of different league mechanics this league just to see how far we can push that profit margin. Uh, that's it for this video. There is going to be another video with this full strategy, regardless of whether it's success or a failure. I'll kind of go through my workings, the profit, what went wrong, what went right. But it's probably going to be a few days because I do want to make sure I've got the strategy almost down to a fine art and make sure it's as streamlined and profitable as it can be. Hope everyone has a good day. Thanks for watching. Take care and see you in the next one.